I was not expecting what happened to me that summer when I went into the bathroom the next few days. Now, I did not have a plan as to how I would clean the handkerchiefs and put them back. I didn't even get that far in my thinking. Not of having a period is that I could also give birth. <laughs> I was 11 years old and as skinny and flat chested as my eight year old brother. So I was not expecting what happened to me that summer when I went into the bathroom and saw blood on my white cotton underwear. In fact, I was not only not ready, I didn't know what it was. I thought I was dying. And um, my mother had not told me a thing. I had never been told about sex or where babies came from. The only information I had about that was what I had read in the um, Johnson and Johnson baby book for parents. There was a little section about telling your children about where babies come from. And it was pretty euphemistic language. So it really didn't help all that much. I had seen the movie. They had showed us this little movie after school, only the girls and all the boys were like, ha, 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 what are they doing in there? What are they talking about? And, um, so it was all kind of felt icky and uncomfortable. And the movie was from, I guess, from the late 50s, as I remember what the girls' clothing looked like. It was in black and white. And all the girls looked like my Barbie doll. They all had like really pointy boobs and and they all looked like they were about 25. I I didn't relate to any of that. And and plus the little drawing that they had, the line drawing of of what you know, the pear-shaped uterus and how the the lining sloughs off when uh, menstruation happens it was in black and white. So I had no clue that it was going to be blood. So I really thought that I was dying. Well, you'd think that I would immediately go to my mother and say, I'm dying. But in fact, because it had to do with down there, I had no other words for it either. Um, I didn't, I didn't want to tell her. Uh, I didn't, I just felt so much fear and shame. And, and so I knew that my dad had a lot of handkerchiefs in his drawer. So I, I made sure my mom was down doing something in the kitchen. And I, I went into their room and I got a handkerchief out of my dad's top drawer and I stuffed it in my underwear. And that's what I did for the next few days. Now, I did not have a plan as to how I would clean the handkerchiefs and put them back. I didn't even get that far in my thinking. So I hid them in my Barbie doll suitcase. I had this, appropriately enough, little red suitcase uh, where I kept my Barbie dolls you know, the ones with the really pointy tits and um, and their clothes and so forth. And so that's where I hid my handkerchiefs, um, my bloody handkerchiefs. 
Well, I guess my mother must have noticed that handkerchiefs were disappearing and and I'm sure I was acting weird anyway. And she kind of figured it out. And and she said, you know, why didn't you tell me? And I I didn't know what to say because I I didn't have the language for what I felt, which was shame. Well, many years passed and um, when I finally was pregnant with my first child, I, we were living in Richmond by then and I, we were very much into natural foods and, and uh, my husband and I and, and um, so we found out that there was uh, a nurse midwife that did home births. I had met a, a midwife when we lived in New York and I really, I loved the feeling um, that I got from her as she talked about childbirth. It was, it wasn't a medical emergency. It was something beautiful and natural and I really wanted that. And I found out there was a, a support group, a home birth support group in Richmond. And it was through that group that I made friends with, um, with a group of women that I am still friends with to this day, even though some of us have moved far away. Um, we got together on Zoom last week. It was pretty, pretty wonderful, but, um, through them, we began to, um, I began to get the mothering that I needed, um, that was very nurturing. And we also, rather than having a baby shower, we, we had these ceremonies. We, we came up with them ourselves. We, it was the 90s. We borrowed some terminology. We called them blessing ways, which is an, a Navajo, um, a Navajo idea. And I suppose if Hollywood were to make a movie of us in a blessing way, they would, you know, make fun of all these white suburban women uh, with smudge and and you know. But really, the heart. Of those of those rituals that we did was the storytelling. Um, after we had done created the the space, the container, the sacred container for for what would happen, um, we would sit and we would tell stories really about birth, about loss. Um, there was a lot of laughter and there were definitely tears as well. And then um, there was also, a, for the woman who was having the baby, there was uh, this wonderful fragrant herbal foot bath <laughs> that, um, that was part of it. And, you know, late pregnancy, a lot of times your feet are kind of swollen anyway. Or um, So it was really nice. And then... Um, they would present gifts and wishes for the mother. And, and uh, there was always a, a, a floral crown involved. And then of course, there was lots of eating afterwards, a big, wonderful potluck um, after, after the ceremony. And so it was such a, such a beautiful way to, um, to enter into the process of birth. And I, I was so fortunate to have a great midwife. I had both of my boys at home. Uh, my husband uh, was there. Um, and uh, after the birth of my second child though, I really wanted to have another blessing way. I wanted to reclaim for myself that that passage into womanhood that was so fraught with fear and shame back when I was 11 
So I called my women friends together and said, I want to have a blessing way for celebrating becoming a woman, starting my period. So um, we gathered together like we always did. Um, and I wore a beautiful red dress. I had a red floral wreath. And one of the visuals that I remember was that everybody had a little red votive candle and they put it on this big plate in the middle of our circle. And as they melted, it looked like the, it was these pools of red on the plate with the little flames. It was, it was so beautiful, such a, such a great, um, great metaphor for, um, for what I had come to know as a, 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 the gift of being a woman, the gift of, of, of having a period is that I could also give birth. <laughs> and um, so, but the really the coolest thing, the real blessing, coolest thing that happened during that ceremony is that um, uh, my periods were always really regular. And uh, so what happened during that ceremony, my period was not due for two weeks, but during that blessing way, I got up to go to the bathroom and discovered that my period had started in the middle of the ceremony. I, that was just the coolest thing I remember coming down and, and, uh, and, and telling my girlfriends, like, how cool is that? <laughs> so, um, uh, I, I haven't, I haven't had a period in about 10 years. Um, and I have to say that I, I really thought that I would miss it a lot. I don't, I, I, I was really fortunate. I didn't have like a lot of cramps or have heavy stuff, but um, I think embracing it has allowed me to embrace getting older as well and to, and to claim, um, to claim the dream of that, that little girl. Cause I always said when I was 11 and 12 that I wanted to be a writer and a minister when I grew up. And so I'm on my way. That's my story. Thanks for listening.